Let's look at one more example of how we would compare two distributions, and this time we'll compare two histograms. So I'm just going to note that the, the histograms are useful if you want to compare shapes, centers, and spreads. Um, and you don't know often what the median is exactly because each bar in a histogram is covers a, a certain range of values, not the particular values, so you never really know exactly what the, the mean is, for instance. So we just kind of use a little bit nuanced and, and general language when we're describing the centers. Um, they're not really useful when you're, dis when you're comparing more than two distributions because the differences become so nuanced that you can't really... It becomes hard. The language is just too hard to, to apply to many distributions in, to, in order to say something meaningful. But when we're, we're doing the comparisons, let's be sure to touch on the shapes, the centers, and the spreads, and the unusual features as usual. So, what can we say about these two distributions? Let's start with shape. It looks like class B has a somewhat skewed left distribution. And I would say tests, you know, class A is slightly skewed left, but it's a little more symmetric. So let's point that out. Let's say the distribution of test scores for class A is slightly skewed left. Um, while the distribution for class B is highly skewed left. It's highly skewed left. It looks like you had a lot of low score. You had a, a lot of people scoring in the high end for class B, and um, and not a whole lot, not as many performing in the middle. So actually, let's indicate that. Let's say class B had many more high performers than class A. The ranges, in terms of spread, the ranges are about the same. I mean, we had a couple who scored up close to zero or zero, and some that aced it for both classes. So I don't know that the range is an important thing to mention, or to say anything meaningful. But let's uh, we could ballpark where the majority, the majority of uh, students scored for both. So I think I'm going to indicate that it looks like the majority of scores for class A is between 50 and you know. 50 and 90, right? It looks like the majority for class A, most of it falls in there. And for class B, it looks like um, the bulk scored above a 60, right? Most students scored in that range. So let's just indicate that. And that'll suffice for our, uh, another measure of center there. Right? We didn't exactly use the median. The median for class A might be around, um, you know, in the 70-ish range. Now we could count in, but I think for now it looks like if we, you, you want to look for the mode, the highest peak, that's about where the median will be. Um, so it says here that the majority, or I'm going to write here, that the majority of scores for class A lie between 50 and 90. And let, let's just point out the median. The median is probably 70 to 80. Um, 
whereas for class B, the majority the majority of scores are above 60. Um, and there me and the median is between I'd say 80 to 90 right looks like the median is around that area all right so we've touched on the shape skewness we've touched on the spread by sort of I did the spread I used a kind of vague terms I didn't use the range I just sort of said that the majority of scores rely between 50 and 90 and uh, 70 and 80 that'll suffice I think for spread um, I've talked about the medians so I've talked about the centers in terms of unusual features we mean we mean outliers and I would say I mean we don't really know for sure because we we don't have the data in front of us it could be that the, the people who score between 0 and 10 for both classes are outliers. And for class A, that person who scored 105, that could be an outlier too. But we don't really know for sure, but we could at least indicate that those are possibilities. So I might say that those who scored between 0 and 10 maybe outliers for both classes and I want to say that the 105 on class for the person who scored 105 in class A that might be an outlier too and the 105 for class A may be an outlier too Um, but, I mean, we would need to do more analysis to know for sure. Okay, um, this wraps up comparing distributions, and, uh, Again, I'm, it's, when I'm modeling this, all I'm trying to get you to, to see is the type of things I look for in a distribution. I look at shape, I look at center, I look at spread in any way I can. Um, de depending on what the, the representation is, I indicate any unusual features, um, and you know I, I compare them for both distributions. And then, of course, I always there's always questions you have, right? That that's usually what happens. You don't know everything just from a distribution. You just you know it leads to more questions, and that would lead to further study. And that's sort of how the cycle of statistics goes. Um, but anyway, I've modeled two examples. On the next two slides, I have examples that you can try on your own, um, just as an exercise, and uh, hopefully it goes well. But this will wrap up um, comparing two distributions given uh, given an, our quantitative data. All right, so here are two examples you can try on your own. Just compare the distributions below, compare the shapes and our spreads and any possible outliers. The first example, I'm going to draw a horizontal line here. The first example compares the average temperatures in July for two cities, San Diego and Buffalo. And, the, um, and those are between the years 1940 and 2005. And the second example compares the 2017 Red Sox and Astro salaries, and, uh, and those are about the uh, units are in millions of dollars. So, see if you can use the language of statistics to compare shape, center, spread, and any possible outliers.